So in the previous part of the DAG lecture, I have explained um, some of the basic concepts of uh, how to represent various type of variables in a directed acyclic graph or DAG. And now in this, uh, in this part, I'm going to show that um, the purpose of DAG uh, may be more than identifying just one confounder. Um, and one of the criticisms of DAG is that it can be pretty subjective uh, and one subject area expert can draw one DAG and another subject area expert can draw another DAG. So um, which is the correct DAG? Uh, so it is also true for any kind of analysis that you do. You are always operating under certain assumptions and depending on your assumption, you are doing your analysis and creating this DAG is no different than that. Whoever is drawing the DAG, they are operating under their assumption and under the assumption that they mention uh, that they are operating under, um, they are doing all of their analysis based on that. All right, so DAG, the some of the DAG representation that I have shown in the previous part, um, how to represent a confounder, how to represent a mediator, how to represent a collider, those are pretty easy to understand and recognize. But often you can have a pretty difficult DAG which is very complex and then the relationship which is a collider, which is a confounder and which is a mediator variable um, can be pretty hard to um, isolate. So one of the criteria when I was explaining the paths, I, I explained that there is a front door uh, criterion and there is a back door criterion. So we are basically interested about this back door criterion um, where uh, we can identify whether there was any um, confounding going on. Um, and, and this criterion is very helpful in identifying that kind of confounding. So in a very simplistic scenario, this is one um, screenshot from the Daggety website. I will show you the Daggety website a bit later. So in that website, you can see, you can draw a DAG like this, where this green variable is the exposure variable, this, um, and, uh, this blue variable with this I inside is the outcome variable. And you have a couple of other type of variables, but one thing that you want to uh, make sure is that you do not have any red paths in your uh, in your DAG. So what is this red path? This red path is basically the biasing path and you may have some green paths. Those are causal paths. You, so you do not have to worry too much about them but this uh, red path is something that you need to worry about. All right, so um, this is an example uh, from a textbook that you, you might be familiar with uh, where red nodes are something that are not adjusted and red paths are something that is representing the back door or biasing path. So in this example, we want to know whether adjusting for only these variables, this prenatal care is enough to get causal effect of this vitamin um, on birth defects, right? So if we just adjust for this variable, is it enough to adjust for all of the problems that you are seeing in this um, data set or, or in this tag where you have all of this um, red paths. So you will see that if you adjust for these two variables, then you do not have any more red paths, right? But it is also possible that you adjust for only these two variables and there are no red paths anymore. There are green paths, there are uh, dark um, black paths, but there are no green paths anymore sorry the no red paths anymore 
and you can also see there is a third set so you are just for this variable and this variable and still you get the same condition so the idea of minimal adjustment set is that um, you can choose um, a set of variables that are enough to adjust for all of the uh, biasing paths in your data so this is the first adjustment set we adjusted for these two there was no more red lines anymore then we adjusted for these two then there was no biasing path anymore and then we adjusted for these two and then there was no biasing path anymore so you can see it it does not matter uh, whether you are adjusting for one variable or not so you, like instead of demonizing only one variable maybe think of um, under the entire DAG what are the variables at minimum you need to adjust to get um, get rid of all of the biasing path and all right so we we just saw that DAGs can be helpful in identifying suitable variable uh, based on um, the DAG that you draw but drawing the DAG requires uh, subject area knowledge and this can be subjective right and um, if a variable is of clinical significance then we usually try to include that in the DAG um, and then try to figure out under which combination we can obtain a DAG without any biasing path so in if you go through the textbook as i have explained in my previous part of the video that um, if you are adjusting for confounder adjusting for uh, and and not adjusting for mediator or uh, colliders um, you, you you are fine but in theory it is hard to formalize a complete dag um, especially from secondary or observational data sources and uh, also in the observational or non-experimental data we do not have any variable labels we do not know which is a confounder instrumental variable or risk factor or collider we have to have this kind of knowledge from subject area expert but then again the subject area experts can disagree with each other so um, in the next part i will talk about some of the um, other techniques uh, that do not require you to have the knowledge of a complete DAG.